In today's video, we have a lot of NHL signings to discuss. We have many RFA players that have come to terms with their existing teams. We have a UFA signing to discuss, as well as it's been announced that Jerome McGinley will be finally officially announcing his retirement. We're going to do a quick overview of his career as well, coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams, so if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned off the top, we have a lot of signings to discuss here, so let's just jump right into it. The Winnipeg Jets have come to terms with a couple of players. Let's start with defenseman Tucker Pullman. He's got a three-year contract with an annual value of $775,000. Obviously, after completing his collegiate career, last year was his first pro season, splitting the year between the AHL and the NHL. Looked pretty decent, more so in the AHL, but he got his feet wet in the NHL. It looks like he could be a long-term solution for the Jets on the blue line. Obviously, as we know, the Jets are likely going to be fond of this contract here over the next few years as they have a lot of deals that they need to get signed and they're going to have some cap casualties here. So Pullman's contract likely will come in handy here over the next couple seasons. They also re-signed forward Marco Dano to a one-year deal at 800000 Dano only got into 23 games last season. Uh, not the best year, put out three points. Um, so a little bit of a frustrating season for Dano, but he's going to get a one-year deal here for another crack at trying to see if he can become a regular at the NHL level. The Washington Capitals have come to terms with Brooks Orpik on a one-year deal worth $1 million. As you probably recall, Orpik was traded along with goalie Philip Grubauer at the draft to the Avalanche. The Avalanche then proceeded to buy out Brooks Orpik, and now he's going back to the Capitals on a one-year $1 million contract. Obviously, at some point in time in the future, wouldn't be surprised to see the league change the rules to prevent this from happening. Obviously, this was a great cap management by the Capitals uh, to cut their salaries back here on the books to re-sign some other players. And they still have Orpik in the lineup here. Obviously, I know he's very important to them, especially in a leadership role and in the dressing room. So it's obviously a good signing by the Capitals. Um, like I said, at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised to see the league adjust the rules to prevent this type of thing from happening. The Calgary Flames have also have a couple of new contracts today. Uh, Brett Kulak, as we know, went to salary arbitration with the Flames. Uh, his award has been announced. He gets a one-year deal at 900000 uh, Again, we have another arbitration case here where the arbitrator split the deal right down the middle between where the two sides were asking for. Uh, as we know, Kulak was looking for $1.15 million, and the Flames are offering $650,000. Uh, and so $900,000 is right 50% halfway between the two. Same thing happened with Jacob Truba the other day. The arbitrator split the difference between the two. You'd really think after all this time that the teams could come to these agreements on their own. Uh, if each side just budged a little bit, they'd get this deal done and avoid arbitration. But at least it's done, and Kulak uh, will have a one-year contract next season. Now, the Calgary Flames have also re-signed forward Mark Jankowski. Jankowski gets a two-year deal with a value of $1.67 million. Uh, Jankowski now has a couple of pro seasons under his belt after completing his collegiate career. Uh, put up 17 goals last year, becoming a fairly important player for the Flames within their forward group. I certainly expect his development and improvement here to continue. Uh, so I like this deal for the Flames. It's short-term, lets him to continue to prove himself. And if his uh, production continues to grow here, uh, he'll likely get a longer-term deal as this one comes to expire. The Vancouver Canucks have come to terms with forward Jake Vertanen on a two-year deal with an annual value of $1.25 million. Obviously, Vertanen was a very high draft pick a few years back and hasn't quite lived up to the height. And I know sometimes he gets a lot of flack from Canucks fans for not producing at the level they were hoping for. Uh, last season, he put up 10 goals and 10 assists for 20 points. So his development is continuing. Uh, he's still only 21 years old, soon to be 22. Uh, with all the young players that he's going to be able to play with on his Canucks roster. Moving forward, I certainly have a lot of optimism that he can grow into being a more productive NHL player. Not sure he's ever really going to turn out to be that top-line uh, offensive force that he was kind of expected to be upon being drafted, but can still be a useful player and play within their top nine uh, with the Canucks lineup. The Nashville Predators have signed UFA defenseman Dan Hamuse to a two-year deal of $1.25 million. As most of you probably recall, Hamuse started his career at the Predators has now come full circle to likely end his career there. Obviously, after playing six years with the Predators, he left as a free agent, signed with the Canucks, uh, made his way down to Dallas for a couple years, and now heads back to the Predators. 
Obviously, at this point in his career, he can certainly be a pretty solid third-pair guy uh, with the Predators having a very solid top-four defense group. Uh, obviously, he would be a you know a number five, six, seven type defenseman. But as we all know, especially when it comes to a long year and having hopes for a deep playoff run, you need to have a lot of depth on the blue line as well as in other positions. But the blue line is one of the most crucial, and he offers that veteran presence back there with an insurance policy. Should somebody in their top four get injured or miss any significant amount of time, so I like this deal for the Predators. Gives them some more experience there in the back end in that the depth role, and it should be good for Ham Hughes to kind of have a chance here to win a Stanley Cup and. Uh, end his career in a Predators uniform. The Dallas Stars have come to terms with forward Matthias Janmark on a one-year deal of $2.3 million. Now, Janmark was originally a 2013 draft choice of the Red Wings, but was moved to Dallas in 2015 as part of the trade that sent Eric Cole out of the Stars organization. So far, I'd say that trade's worked out reasonably well. Janmark's becoming a pretty uh, decent and efficient forward here for the Dallas Stars. His production over the past two seasons has continued to improve. Two years ago, we put up 29 points. Last season, he put out 34. And as I mentioned, I fully continue that to expect to grow. Uh, I think as his time goes on, he'll get a bigger role, uh, put up some better numbers, and become an even more important player for the Dallas Stars. Now, last but not least here, I want to take a quick look at the career of Jerome Aginla. Now, as we all know, Jerome Aginla has made an announcement today that he's going to be finally be retiring. That announcement will come with the Calgary Flames at the Saddle Dome. Uh, I think it's only fitting he retire in a Flames jersey where he spent the bulk of his career being their team captain. Obviously, Aginla's had a tremendous career. I don't think there's any doubts he'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's played over 1,500 games, scored over 600 goals, uh, which I believe is only 20 players have done in NHL history. So he's certainly an elite company. His exactly 13 regular season points as well uh, so he's got a lot to be proud of the only thing missing on his resume was that elusive Stanley Cup which unfortunately a lot of players are not able to see uh, in their careers it's a very tough trophy to win as we know but he still has nothing to be ashamed of here Jerome McGinley had an absolutely tremendous career upon leaving Calgary he's obviously touched base here at the Pittsburgh Penguins the Boston Bruins the Colorado Avalanche and briefly with the LA Kings to wrap things up Last season, he did not play in the NHL, and it was speculated that perhaps he was trying to make a comeback, trying to find a contract, but that never came to be. It was speculated he might play in the Olympics as well, uh, and unfortunately, that never came to be either. So after all this time, Jerome McGill has come to the conclusion it's time to hang him up, and like I said, he's had a tremendous career. First ballot Hall of Famer, in my opinion. I'd like to know what your opinion is down below. Do you think Aguinaldo goes into the Hall of Fame upon being eligible on the first ballot? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And don't forget as well to share your thoughts and opinions on all these signings we discussed today. All kinds of players coming to terms on new deals. Uh, so there's lots to discuss down below. So let me know your thoughts on all these contracts. If you're new to the channel here, I hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams, and there's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.